How many Royal Marines commandos can you see in this scene? You may already have the Royal Marines commandos state of mind. first walk through the doors at the gym? I think the first, uh, first time I walked through the doors of the gym was uh, when I was 10 years old. I went to the, the Fitzroy Lodge Amateur Boxing Club in Lambeth, which is no more than a mile, a mile from here. Um, and uh, yeah, I never looked back. And we have a brand new WBA, WBC, Cruiserweight Champion of the World. His name is David Hay. Did you want to be a fighter or did you just end up? No, no, I always wanted to be a fighter. If you'd asked me what I wanted to do when I was three years old, I would have said I'm going to be a heavyweight champion of the world. I would have said it with the same conviction I set today. And, um, you know, it was, a, it was a long time ago. But, you know, I've, I did what I've had to do in the amateurs and in the pros. And, you know, it seems like my, that my ultimate dream is getting close and close. getting close and taste it. What about your first fight? You were 11 years of age. Where was it, Dave? You know um, it was in the gym at the, the, uh, the Fitzroy Lodge. It was a club show. And I uh, fought, fought some of so another lad who was having his first first fight and lasted 12 seconds. I ran straight <laughs> out there, hit him on the chops, legs went, a little flurry and the referee stopped it. When did uh, when the other kids start to catch up with you, size and It was when I was wise. about 15, 16, I had to start fighting seniors. I had to really start fighting mm -hmm. guys who were a lot older than myself uh, because guys at my age wouldn't, wouldn't want to fight me. Or the coaches wouldn't want to put me in the ring with me. Wouldn't want to risk them going in. No, so I was sparring with professionals when I was 14, 15 years of age. Mm -hmm. And you know, well renowned professionals who were champions, you know, so European you're, level cha you're champions. Them. And I'm pushing these guys at the age of 14. You know, that doesn't happen. No. Um, I think the only Shall time I've heard that to. happen was uh, with uh, Nassim, ha Nassim Hamid. There's yeah. the only other guy I can think of was doing that That's at such 15 you know, and doing 15. it to pros. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. When did it start to hurt, mate? Like? When did you realise? When did it start to hurt? When was it? When did you realise, hold on a minute, I've got to be a bit careful here. This is dangerous, if I don't keep my hands up, I'm going to get you on the chin. I think it was uh, when I really started fighting internationally, fighting guys, you know, these Russians, these uh, big, strong men who had no, who didn't care about reputation, who didn't care Never about you know, what you looked like, how big your muscles what were, you'd done. what you'd done. They were there to knock you out and they, they were in great shape, you know, they, they were the best but in Russia. Like at the time. That, this, but, is the, this is that contradiction, is yeah. that you actually like that, didn't you? Like no idea, this is a real test today. Yeah. This is a real problem. Yeah. The good thing is about those, uh, those internationals is you're getting experience. Yeah. You're boxing three guys or two guys or four guys in a week yeah. in Helsinki or somewhere, and you're learning. I think that's invaluable. I think those internationals are invaluable. Man. People, people really do underrate that. A lot of people are in a rush to turn professional, uh, and I definitely feel without that, international pedigree as an amateur fighting the top guys from around the world you know you you really you get handicapping yourself when it comes to when you move to the to top level as a professional and how many did you have how many amateur international bouts do you think you had um i think i had to around the world to commonwealth uh, around about 50 i think Interna international it's, 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 it's not as much as other guys yeah, i hear about Cubans. these cuban guys Having 300 on yeah, the, sure. you know, so but it was enough for me to learn my craft, learn my trade, um, and I think without those 50 international fights, yeah. you know, I definitely wouldn't be the, the man I am today. Now the first major tournament you go to overseas is that one in Houston, World Championship, yeah, yeah. 1999. You're at light, light heavyweight. Light heavyweight, yeah. Um, I thought it was a bit of a bittersweet experience, really, because you lost to the eventual champion. Yeah. But I don't know, personally, I was there. I thought you could have beaten. It was yeah, it was one of those things. Uh, I had a fight in my first fight against a guy from Ukraine. Yeah, good fight. A tough, strong lad, like, yeah. as you normally get from Ukraine. So I beat him pretty easily on points. Um, in the second fight, I was fighting the American favourite, uh, Michael Sims. Sims yeah, yeah, who's, who's uh, been around, done done his thing. He's a, he's a good, recognised fighter. I watched his first fight, and what what I saw was a southpaw, a slick southpaw. He came out there, you know, done his thing, and I'm yeah. thinking he's not that great. You know, the few just didn't look, it didn't look that it natural. It didn't look great. I agree with you. I so I, I turn up there in my second prelim fight, 
getting there but in my mind I'm running through looking yeah. past him looking past him uh, thinking okay yeah, I, I, I've dealt with southpaws never really had a problem with southpaws I'll be able to get this guy out of the way he fights me orthodox and it's only until yeah, the yeah, halfway through didn't the first, first round I was like it just, I just didn't feel right and then I realised okay he's, he's actually an orthodox orthodox fighter and then you're chasing and, points and then I'm, then I'm down a couple of points so I'm trying to claw him back what about the following year, the 2000 Olympics? You yeah. got one bite of the chair, you didn't get yeah. two, you didn't go. That, that must have hurt, he must have tempted you to yeah. turn pro. Yeah, yeah. You must have felt let down. Yeah, yeah, for sure, you know, there was a four qualifying tournaments. Um, and what, what, I was, what was told to me was, you know, uh, Courtney Fry would get uh, the first two cracks, yeah. as he was the guy with the experience. I thought, sort of, fair enough. That's standard, yeah. And, uh, so, and I'd get the second two cracks. So I thought, okay, he went to the first two, he you lost. Him, he, he lost. I you went beaten to, him but this stage. I, 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 I knocked him out in two rounds. Yeah. I knocked him out in two rounds and um but then again I coincidentally I lost after that fight as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know it was about who was who was who was better at that present moment time. So we both went into the, the multi-nations and what they wanted to clear the situation up so they put us put all the top uh, uh, light Fires heavyweights in that. and to, to have a box off yeah. as, uh, as such, which I thought was a real Coming good idea. Coming down this side of the channel. Yeah, exactly, yeah. we're both on opposite sides of the draw. Yeah. So whoever wins that should go. Um, how it happened, we, got, uh, we both got to the finals and he pulled out of the finals, yeah. so I thought, okay. So you got a fancy then, you're in the driving yeah, seat. Yeah, so out of the four tournaments, slot. I'd least expect to get 50% uh, of the 50%. So I get the third, <sighs> the third fight. The third yeah. uh, bite of the cherry, the third tournament, I fight Fragimeni, a guy who I beat yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not, not long ago as a professional. He was the current uh, heavyweight European champion. At I, that uh, stage? At that stage, he was a, he was a, he was a good, strong fighter. Um, I thought I beat him pretty easily. I think you've got to look on YouTube at that yeah, fight. Yeah. When did you find out you didn't get the shot? When did you find out it was going to um, be Courtney again? I think it was there and then. I think they after that fight, they said they, they thought I won the fight. Uh, and they said, I think we were saying Courtney Price to the, the fourth one, even though he, he had quite, it was quite common knowledge, he had a really bad back. But you, did, but you didn't, but you stayed amateur then, you still yeah, didn't turn pro then? Yeah, definitely, I, I just didn't feel it was the right time. They say it's a statue. Well, you know, what's going to happen? That's not a statue. That's what they say, I don't think it is either. So you stayed for the Worlds in 2001. Mm -hmm. Belfast, you come for all those prelim fights, you get in the ring in the final, and you basically knock the Cuban out. But he stands up. Yeah, he, he, he's, a, he's a tough cookie, he really was. Um, I, obviously I had a hard road to the final, but a better man won in the night. You know, if, if I'd have done things differently, maybe I'd have had to put it off, but it wasn't meant to be, you know. I was always meant, to, uh, I, I was a runner up. I always wanted to be the, the world champion. Um, as an amateur, I, I came, one position short of that, I got a silver medal. But, you know, that just gave me that extra driving force to get, all I wanted to do is get that one more to be recognised as the best in the world, and I've done that as a, as a professional. Yeah. But then there was the Commonwealth Games the year after, there's yeah. a lot of confusion, Shannon. They just yeah. tell us exactly what happened. Oh, the whole thing with the Commonwealth Games was, it was all about, um, it was never about, I, I wanted to be the, the Commonwealth champion, you know, because, you know, there was nobody in the Commonwealth uh, at my weight, the heavyweight, who was, ranked, who was ranked in the top 15 in the world. Sure. Now, I was ranked number two, there was no one in the top 15, so it was a matter of me going through there, knocking everyone out, doing it pretty pretty comfortably, and uh, just getting a bit of press, and then uh, using that as a springboard to yeah. turn professional. Pro, yeah. uh, so, but what happened was, I had the first fight against a guy from Pakistan. Easy fight, went out there, bish, bash, bosh, bam, 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 bam. Hold up. Tore my bicep in the process. Gutted. So um, obviously went down to went to went to London to see my um, uh, specialist. Uh, my specialist. Uh, he had, had all the MRI scans and whatnot, and he advised that if I, if I carry on fighting with it, it, it could possibly tear and completely. And that's not that's not a good injury a boxer wants to get. So I thought, okay, pull out of the tournament. Um, but obviously the way I went about it is I didn't go to the. The channels. They didn't feel the right channel. I did what I wanted to do. So you regret maybe the way you went about it? Um, or do you regret? Do, 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 not really, because the result right. would have been the same. I would have, right. I would still, have boxed because it's it, boxed. It not went through the, the, the right channels, but that was always going to be my last tournament anyway. Turn pro, it's all going very swimmingly. Yeah. You're competing on the chin, they're dropping, yeah. they're dropping like they're meant to drop. Yeah. 
dropping comfortably. Yeah. Uh, ten, ten of those, uh, mm -hmm. bar one of them, is a little little guy from the Congo, Lenga Mott, who didn't read the script and uh, wanted to try and mess up <laughs> our plans. And he knocked me down in the, I think, the second round. Buzzed me badly, got up and managed to get, get, get a victory. But yeah, pretty much 10 fights, 10 knockouts. Let's stick with that mock fight, because it was your reaction once Mock had caught you and he hurt you. I mean, no one denies yeah, yeah. he hurt you, you know, you talk about that. But it was your reaction, about you, you grabbed hold of him, you took him down, you held onto yeah. him. It was that kind of, not instinct, it was that, that the idea that you knew what to do. Yeah. And, and my, my, I reckon that you gained that through all those international fights. Though. Definitely, there's just obviously been times in, in, the, in the amateurs where, you know, you're fighting someone, some tough, big, strong guy who's a champion of his, his yeah. country. He's, he's going to come to win. He's going to clip you on the jaw. Clip you on the jaw, and you've got to find a way to get through it. Yeah. And in the amateurs, they stop fights pretty easy. So you've got to disguise yeah, the yeah, fact yeah. that you're hurt sometimes. Do whatever you've got to do to get through the rounds. Only two minutes. You can hold on. You can. You can. There's little tricks you can do to kill the clock. You know. Yeah. And those, all those had to come into play in that. Yeah, it's yeah, it's only my fourth. It's only my fourth professional fight. Yeah, of course. And, um, it was. It was. A, it was a toughie. Yeah. But it was, that's what's made me the man, man I am today. Because. For instance, I got put down against uh, John Mark Mormick. Okay, everyone's yeah. got his name already. John Mark Mormick. And I had to use them the same as a survival. Yeah. Uh, survival Once you got up from there. Once you got from there, I had to kill the clock. I realised the round's lost. I've lost it 10-8. Yeah. So, you know, I could stand there, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, and I was still lost 10-8. So, you might as well use the rest of the round, kill the no, clock, no. get through it. You get, you get as hit as little as possible and regroup and come back for a strong... Well, that broke more mix heart, I think, the fact that he dropped you. You yeah. sort of got the idea that he dropped you and then for him it was like mission accomplished. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. I've worn him out. Yeah. I've dropped him. Yeah. He don't fancy it. Yeah. It's all over yeah. now. And suddenly he doesn't hit you for two rounds. Yeah, because there was a word, was a word around the campfire before that fight was get me into the second part of the fight yeah. and I'm anything left. Yeah. You know, obviously people looked at the Carl Thompson fight in my 11th yeah. fight and thought, okay, you know, obviously he's doing the same thing now. Ten fights on, he was doing yeah. it, which is obviously... You all, you all know improvement. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, he tried it and it didn't, it didn't work. work. The, same, the same tactics was you tried to use by um, so, Fragmenti, so, that didn't work. That didn't work. So how did it work then? And why did it work in your 11th fight against that veteran Carl Thompson? It didn't how, work. Why did it work? Why did it work then? Physically and mentally, I wasn't ready. All right. Physically and mentally, I, I wasn't ready for the type of fight that... And when did you realise? When did you realise? At what point in that fight did you realise um, I'm not big enough, strong enough, old believe enough? Believe it or not, yet? even it wasn't until the fight was finished that I realised that. Okay. During the fight, I just thought I was just one of those things. Uh, I was hurt. You know, you put so me was down. He. So it was, was he. So was he. But I, you don't really feel that. It's all yeah. about what I'm doing, what I, what's happening to me. And uh, even right before the fight was stopped, I remember thinking I had a little smug look on my face, thinking. I'm gonna get you sooner or later. I'm gonna knock you out in a minute. You might be having you a good time. You, you think you did? You might be having a good time now, but don't worry. Next I've got, you know, I've eight more rounds. Yeah, next time <laughs> the towel comes in, I'm like, hold on, I can't win this fight. Yeah. The fight's finished. I've lost. Like, how could that? How could this happen? This just wasn't, this wasn't in the script. How many Royal Marines commandos can you see in this scene? You may already have the Royal Marines Commando's state of mind. But how many did you count? You may already have the Royal Marines Commando's state of mind. Adam sit down after that and we, look at that that we, night. We, 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 not that not night. That night, night, that you know, night. So look we, at that we, night. We went back, I think, I think myself and I don't think me and Adam have actually looked at it, watched it together. I think we've watched it on separate, se separate occasions. And uh, I think I watched the fight once after the fight, fully in its entirety. And even watching it, I'm thinking, I'm going to win in a minute. I'm going to win in a minute. <laughs> this is, I'm not going to lose. How does this happen? But it, I, wasn't, I wasn't physically and mentally prepared. Yeah. to be in the sort of battle that I put myself in. I went out there and went toe to toe with a strong, yeah. tough veteran. And laughed, called it. him in, full work. Every mistake you could make against the guy. It. And you know, I, I came close, you know, a couple yeah. of times the referee was close to stopping it in my favor. Could have stopped it. But yeah, yeah, I agree. I, the right decision was made. The right decision was made not to stop that fight yeah. because it taught me a, a valuable lesson and a lesson that I needed to learn at some stage of my career. So how'd you come back from a, a loss like that when so much was being promised after that fight? Yeah. When in theory you've got to do so much, how'd you come back from a fight like that? Being crushed yeah, by yeah, an old obviously man Obviously, like mentally, you're, 
it hurt, it really did hurt, you know, because uh, you have to ask yourself some serious questions. You know, am I as good as I think I am? You know, can I take a shot as, as well as I think I can take? You know, uh, have, I got the, have I got what it takes to beat, you know, the top level? This guy, this guy, Carl Thompson was good, but he was, he was never been he was like... that way, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, was, he, was, he was old, you know. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. And I, I just think, I just... And, and I actually had to realise, I, I just got it wrong. This is boxing. You sort of look at, look at the history of boxing and realise these things happen from time yeah. to time. You can't have it your own way all the time. Yeah. And you've just got to just become a bit bigger and stronger man. You've got to take things more seriously inside and outside of the ring. And I think, it, I think it, it, the, the things that needed to fall into place have fallen into yeah. place because if, that w if they wouldn't have fallen into place, uh, the same thing would have happened again against some of the other guys I fought. So you talk about the confidence in that fight. You know, part of what, you, what, 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 what makes you, Dave, is that confidence. Yeah. So you know you're going to beat Mormick. You know you're going to beat Macronelli. Well, how do you keep a tight guard on that? How can you be that confident and not be too confident be in the ring? You've got to be realistic about, you know, about what your strengths and weaknesses are and what your opponent can do and uh, pick a strategy and a game plan that which helps you which, win which, 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 in, which sort of, uh, implements everything that the whole fight sort of has to offer and being a tough fight I am I can stick I can stick to a game plan for instance the Mormick fight that was to the letter bar getting knocked down in the fourth round everything was but you couldn't do that Dean Thompson I, 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 game plan then mentally, it was about I couldn't do that no mentally I wasn't prepared to do that because it took the Thompson fight it took the loss it took the loss to get me to the point where okay I've trained day in day out doing a, a specific strategy I have to keep it even though I got knocked if down I, don't, I had to still keep the strategy and the strategy was you know my, I was going to win the second half of the fight yeah of course you know we were trained for a 12 round fight we knew early you were going to do a, you were going to do a more mech on him exactly you know people don't people don't expect me to come back late in fights but all my training you know for from round seven onwards was we're going to pick it up and go to work and what happens seventh round i end up knocking him out so the first round I pick, pick I pick i mentally pick it up mm. you saw me before after yeah. the sixth round i sat down had a decent thing. i won the sixth round in order to yeah, yeah brilliant, score brilliant round. and then say right it's time to go to work now i thought here we go i had a deep breath okay arms yeah. are fine legs are strong i thought okay and soon as I started to pick up gradually, the fight was over. Now, you know what Adam said, Adam said, you know, we're going to take him into the second half of the fight, we might have to get up off the canvas, but we'll yeah. stay controlled, then yeah. we'll go to work. Yeah, yeah. And what happened? You took him into the second part of the fight, kept the gap off the canvas, yeah. and ding, ding, yeah. round seven, you yeah. went to work. I mean, because, I mean, Adam and you just plotted we're, that fight We're out. realistic about what, what, what boxing's about. We're realistic about, I mean, Adam's not going to say, OK, I'm going to walk through every heavyweight's yeah, yeah. punches and... He knows that if I get hit by someone as quality as Mormick, the chances are if I get hit flush, I'm gonna go you know, down. I'm gonna go down. Of course, man. You know, but it's all about what you do when you go down. Do you get jump straight back up and fall back over again, or do you take, take your time, time, figure it up, figure it out, get through the round? And it's, 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 it's about being realistic. A lot of boxers and a lot of coaches aren't realistic. They yeah. they see boxing in uh, in only one sense. Adam looks at it in the complete opposite way. He looks at all my bad strength, yeah. all my bad points. Because no one's invincible. Exactly, no one's invincible. And when you, I think, when you realise that you're not invincible, you, it when makes you, you a better. Swing and get better. better. Yes. Because <laughs> well, I, I'd guarantee when I before the Mormet, before the, sorry, the, the, the Carl Topper fight, I would have thought I could have fought a peak Mike Absolutely. Tyson. And his punches would have bounced no, off. No, bounce me. off your chin, man. I thought, okay, I might have been knocked down by the gop and won easy. Yeah. Or Lance, I would smash him to bits. Yeah, you, but you know, after you think, okay, maybe not. You know, maybe. Just forgot about that drain. Man. Yeah, exactly. How hard it's it be, can it's be. be. It's being real. It's being realistic. And and I genuinely believe that if I get my tactics right, if I'm in I'm, I'm, I'm in perfect health, if things go the way. I've trained for them to go. I will become the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Just like I said, I'd do it at cruiserweight. And after the Thompson fight, people thought I was mad. And I said, okay, I'm yeah. still going to become a uh, 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 cruiserweight, cruiserweight champion, champion of the world. And I was like, well, you couldn't beat cut a 40 year old Cole Thompson. Now you're supposed to beat these peak guys. But I proved that, you know, if you, if you get it right, you get it right. <laughs>
Mac really was. Mac yeah. really was the guy who had the this big hype All around that him. Publicity. Massive publicity, massive hype. You know, he was a uh, he was a guy with a he was a promoter wrapped around him, saying he's the the future of the cruiserweight division. You know, he, he's done it right. He's done it. He's done it his way. And I just I saw through that big time. You did. I mean, when I was out in uh, Miami with you in the build-up to yeah. that, when you had that solitary cup a few months old, six mm. weeks out there with yeah. Adam, you were so convinced. Again, it was that confidence thing. Yeah. You weren't overconfident. You just knew you could yeah, win, yeah. and you knew what sort of fight it was. Yeah. You sort of predicted the end there yeah. as well. I know. So I told anybody that listen, all my pals, they made big money on the fight. I yeah, told, I told everyone. I think a, a pal of mine got a seventeen to one on the second round. Wow. So I said, stick a lump on the first, and he said, I said, split it even between the first and the second round, and uh, he did, and he, and, he's, and he was laughing at the end of it. I knew it was going to be a, a two-round job at best. Uh, he, there's nothing within his arsenal, physically or, or anything he's done prior to that in any of his fights that show he could actually go beyond one or two rounds with someone like Oliver. But it was always, the, it was always, the, it was always the chance uh, at the, on the night it was going to be down to the guy who was the calmest. And a lot of people thought, would it be Mac? Would it be Mac and Ellie? Some thought, some people thought it would be you. Some people thought there was no way it was going to be you. Yeah. And there was some, you know, it was yeah. it really divided people what was going to happen on yeah. the night in the build-up. But yeah. you seem to take it completely in your stride. Yeah. And Enzo, Enzo was struggling on the night, wasn't it? He? It, was, it was. It seemed it was quite farcical. The whole setup for that fight seemed farcical. It was weird. It was like nobody else could see what myself and Adam could yeah, see. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm on it's your like side. We though, said, though. okay. We, at no stage did we think that uh, his people would take the fight. We thought, no way. Uh, there's certain things happened prior to that fight. We tried to make the fight a few times. It didn't yeah. happen. It wasn't because of us. And we just we just uh, assumed, okay, they know, they know what happened if we ever fought, so they're not going to make it. Next thing you know, we've signed the contract for the fight. We're like, still stunned. Still stunned. Like, oh, he's going to pull out sooner or later. He's going to pull out. He won't actually go through with it. Surely he's not stupid enough to go through the fight. Yeah. And for some reason, they, they believe their own hype. They spouted yeah. so much hype, they believed their own hype. And it, myself and Adam, even was in the dressing room warming up for the fight. We, had a, big, we had a big grin on our face. Again. Couldn't believe what was happening. Oh, like, the, as we said before, it's free, it was free money. We were just turning up to get a paycheck. Yeah. That's all it was. So after that, you decide, that's it, enough yeah. of these cruiserweights. Yeah. They had them a little bit of fun, won a few belts, 20,000 people. Beaten Macronelli, he's the big British guy, yeah. lots of publicity, the heavyweight situation. Yeah. Now that's a different kettle of fish, because yeah, A, you've got to change weight, yeah. and B, you got to you can't knock over bums. You're not like one yeah. of those heavyweights in America that can fight 18 bums. You haven't got yeah. 18 bum fights yeah. in you, so yeah. you've got to go serious. Yeah. That's complicated though, Dave. It's complicated, but it's just something that, well, if, if we get it right, it, it, will look, it will look amazing, you know. If we get it right, if we get fight two great, two, two guys who come to win, who, who try and to pose some one. problems, then we get a big one. It will look, you know, in years to come, it will look like we knew exactly what we were doing, we did the right things. It's just, you know... But no one does it that way anymore, I know, Dave. I know, no one does no it. No one does it, you know. Don't, you know that's, that's what happens in the Rocky films. No, no. That's not meant to happen in real life. What's meant to happen in real life is you fight 15 bums, you wait for a calling card to fight an Eastern European, you make your two million, you lose, and you go and retire. That's, that's what's meant yeah, to that's, happen. That's, that's never been me, that's never been me at all. So how many did you count? You may already have the Royal Marines Commando's state of mind.